Hi there, I'm Angel Alberici. I work in the Millsoft Customer Success Team and in today's Friends of Max session, we're going to take you through an introduction into CICD. Why it's so important for so many organizations, what it is about and how you can start using it for your business today. Without further ado, let's jump right in. Before we do anything else, let's think about why do you want CI, CD and DevOps? What are you looking for? Let's see the benefits from the left to the right. First, you will be improving the customer satisfaction and the customer experience. Your customer will see a flow of quality increases and updates maybe every week instead of waiting for months, quarters or even years. The second point is your releases being less prone to defects. By releasing frequently, you will reduce those risks and you will improve the MTTD, which means mid time to detect or discover. Moving to the center on why does it increase the development productivity? It is that mix between automation and improved communications that gives you and your development teams time to focus on the most important work instead of suffering from too many distractions or too much context switching. In the number four, the testing costs will be reduced drastically. This happens over time and you will be able to use that focus into new features and quality instead. Finally, there will be a higher employee engagement. By removing the low value manual repetitive tasks, you are reducing the human error and your teams will be less frustrated and they will be more motivated. These are the main benefits. But now let's understand the problem we're trying to address with three different scenarios. Let's think about the waiting times and how dangerous they can be for the business. In this example, in the bottom right, you can see the software development lifecycle. In a very simplistic way, you can see the four stages, analysis, design, code, and test. And in the screen, you have the large batch and the single piece flow. For this exercise, you need to deliver a project and you need to choose between those two. In the first case, you do the analysis, then you design, then you code, and then you test. It will take a long time to deliver the first project. It will be many months or maybe even years. In the second case, you can see a single piece flow. In this case, you do smaller iterations where you do analysis, design, code, and test, so that you are adapting to the market, to the customer needs, to the priorities, to the business changes, to the requirement changes. And this comes back to the conversation between Agile and the waterfall. In this scenario about waiting times, we're going to be a developer. As a developer, where we want to deliver our code so that it can be deployed to production and we reach out to the ops team. The ops team is overloaded with work and they need to take around two months to deploy. So as a developer, we will start working in another task in the meanwhile. But we get notified two months later that the code returned to us because they found an issue. The problem here is we're working in something else already we will need to stop it. We will need to investigate what the error is. Most likely we have forgotten the code that we written two months ago and we need to revisit everything we did before. And the challenge here is that we will put that as a priority for the ops team and the business, from the business point of view, there's frustration because the release is not there. Now, this is caused because of how the work stream, the different, the flow of this work stream and the big waiting times that you have for each stage. Let's take another example. Here is an example of how integrations were done before. You will have multiple developers working in different features and sending the code after maybe a couple of weeks or months so that that code can be merged by the sysop engineer. And they will usually send it around the same time because there was a project deadline, for example. Chances are, if a developer was working in a feature for more than one month and then pushes the code, it's most likely to happen that developer 
the other developer working on feature B was touching some of the same areas and modifying some of the same areas as well. This will create an overlap. And of course, merging is not an issue if you're doing it on a daily basis. And if you're doing it maybe even in a weekly basis, but in this case, we're talking about a couple of weeks or months. That's when we talk about the integration health. There is so much complexity there for the sysop engineer where the sysop engineer will manually build, manually test and manually merge all these different uh, branches that the developers have created for the different features. Here we talk about a lot of complexity and a lot of considerable delays. How can we solve this? So that's when we introduce the concepts of CI, CD and DevOps. But before we jump into them, let's not confuse DevOps with CI, CD, where DevOps is when you think about the focus will be around team culture in what the roles are, how they are defined and how quick they can get responses or provide feedback, meaning that they, are, they have responsiveness. Well, in the other hand, CI/CD focuses on software defined life cycle, thinking about what tools are you going to use and how to automate everything that you can possibly automate. Now, the prerequisite here is something we talked about before, is the iterative development practices as agile. Now that we have seen why you want CI/CD, how it can help you and what basis you need to start working with it, let's see how it works. So continuous integrations or CI is the practice of merging all the developers working copies to a shared mainline, meaning all these different features into the same space, into the same branch, for example, repository, branch, folder, or however we're working. And it will be done several times a day and do it with as much automation as possible. So in this case, we have smaller batches the code is pushed quicker and the feature is also smaller. Even more, we do have automated tests, automated builds and automated notifications when something fails. If feature B breaks something that was done in feature A, you will get the notification. But what are the requirements? We mentioned tests. You will need to create those automated tests for each code change you need to execute them. To do that, you will need a continuous integration or a CI server that will build and monitor the code repository. You will be executing the, the test for any code change and notify it every time there's a failure in the test. If the test fails, it means that the code will break production and you, the developer will get notified. Developers also need to merge their change as often as possible. We mentioned it before, at least once per day. And you aim to around 85% of test coverage. So this is a rule of thumb. You can adapt it to your needs. So what are the benefits of continuous integration? We mentioned them in the beginning, reducing the amount of bugs and problems you find in production. You will have a simple release process as well. You will reduce the context switching of the developers your testing calls will be reduced and your QA team can focus in improving quality instead of recreating different tests. That takes us to the next step, that is the continuous delivery. You can see in the image that continuous integration is within continuous delivery. Here we're talking about an approach where teams will create software in short cycles as well, ensuring the software is reliable release at any given time. So at any given time, you can release software. In the case of releasing to production, you will do it manually. But all the rest uh, steps of the process, including acceptance test to verify your requirements or deployments to staging or uh, performance testing, all of those will be already automated to accelerate your delivery. Some of the requirements here, you will need a very mature continuous integration practice. That just means good tests and having a good test coverage. The second point is automated deployments. You need to make sure that anything is automatically deployed except for the manual appro approval to production. The idea here is that developers don't deploy directly to an environment, but everyone does it through the pipeline so that it can be tested. And Lastly, the feature flags, when sometimes you can accept that incomplete features do not affect customers in production. 
some of the benefits we can think about one the deploying software is no longer a challenge you can release second more often and third one you have far less pressure when you're making two decisions for small changes just a quick note we talk about continuous delivery and not about continuous deployment continuous deployment you automatically deploy to production here are some reasons why customers get uh, stop that initiative and stay in continuous delivery it could be the testing environment is not mature it's not similar to production so it's not reliable you could have some regulations or concerns about security you could have some lack of trust in the automated test they are still immature you can have lack of rollback processes if something happens in production are you able to quickly roll back are you able to always roll it back and lastly lack of monitoring and alerts are you able to see that a problem is occurring in production so today we talk about uh, continuous integration again and continuous delivery not about continuous deployment just to summarize working with ci cd see at the two flows in the screen uh, the first one is manual and the second one is already automated processes including the continuous integration meaning continuous delivery so without adding too much complexity and because we have talked uh, a lot of the theory so far this is how the api life cycle looks like you will have your different stages designing development operations and release and you will have the different steps design prototype validate develop and test in this screen you will be able to see how all of that is satisfied by the mules of capabilities by the mules of products so you can see api designer it helps you with the design stage flow designer with the prototyping and so forth now this one is very important because you can see the roles in the bottom of the page you can see designing development and operations you can see in the left the api designers you can see the developers and you can see the mules of products so how the mules of product helps you with the design center with exchange with develop uh, when you're working with studio and then you can see the actual automation so think about the source code management that you need to manage the source code the automated testing you can do this with m unit for example and so that you can test the automation server so that you can build this is done through maven for example and then you will store that package into the artifact repository to to mention one you can use artifactory that way you can manage your releases then you will use this package that is already storage to deploy to using runtime manager for example to your different environments whether it's sandbox or production and on top of that on the right you can see there's monitoring and automated testing just a quick look at some of the ci cd tools that you need in your journey there's the source code management this could be git could be mercurial anything that you prefer dependency management tool for example maven build and deploy automation very commonly used jenkins and artifact repository where you can use artifactory nexus and so forth now to start playing with your mulesoft ci cd and devops setup you can go to catalyst.mulesoft.com and get a kickstart if you're thinking about jfrog implementation there are some examples there the idea here is that you will find far more implementations details there thank you so much for watching this video with us today we have discussed why ci cd is so important how the developers and business can get benefit out of it and we have mentioned some of the potential next steps i would really recommend that you go into the mules of catalyst and check what assets are already available to you thank you for joining us and until next time goodbye